round two, we got Sung Ho on the left with Scorpion, Seeker of Void. And on the right, we've got Will coming back from his victory in round one against Jonathan, uh, playing his Unicorn Keeper of Fire with the new, uh, the new Stronghold. So you see a Black Mill Artist from Sung Ho, uh, followed up by a quick Border Rider at a Will. This version of Sung Ho's deck looks a lot more like a... Um, heavier on the dishonor pressure, I think. I mean, scorpions are already known for their dishonor pressure, but uh, Essie Kadaka, which I'm not sure if that's a very common, common character to play in a scorpion deck. But this time, will we also see with, also see with Will a lot, lava, a lot much. Sorry, a much more swarmy right. build. Both players side. bid five. Uh, yeah, so he's going to have a much better uh, cavalry reserve earlier in the game than he had last time. Yes, so I'm going to do the typical Scorpion thing of uh, just playing your one character and passing, saving and all your money for your, for your events. With a fat board, like with a wide board like this, the Shinjo, uh, Shinjo Shono is a great yeah. card to potentially bring out in the charge. That's only if... Uh, it's only if uh, Sung Ho lets him do it, though. Because I, I, I do see a forged edict in Sung Ho's hand. His hand, I think, has two for shames, a Buyushi Kachiko. Probably going to see that come out a little bit later. An early spyglass by Will going on to a border rider. Uh, very good potentially against Scorpion, however... Uh, there. I don't know if Sungo has a calling in favors in his hand or not, but he does. Uh, he does hit the um, city of lies, and I do see a calling in favors, so that's definitely going to be the play here. We're going to see that go right on to the um, the blackmail artist. Yeah, that, it, I'm always wary of playing spyglasses super early against Scorpion for this reason. I mean, it's yeah. not, it's not this other thing, yeah. like he has reprieves and talismans yep. that he probably wants to be able to get off later. So right, but it, some it's, it's, it's card advantage too, right? Yep. Like this, this is just going to start uh, a snowball train of card advantage. Now the one, the one good thing, Pilgrimage being flipped over in City Lies, very good for uh, Sungho here. The one good thing about this is that because Sungho's dishonored his courtier, he can't use Forge Edict anymore, at least until he gets another, sure. or at least until he re-honors it. So if Will has anything that he he wants to play now, like event-wise, he um, if he if he realizes that he can get away with doing it, no problem. Now that being said, I have I do see two at least two. Well, I see three conflict characters in Sungo's hand. I can't tell what two of them are. I know he has a Bayushi Kachiko, but it looks like he defended that conflict, uh, and he is using for shame on the Shinjo Outrider. Of course, that thing has two glory on it, so if it does get dishonored, that's going to take away all its military favor. So Will electing to bow it instead of dishonoring it makes sense. I see a bonsai. I see an Invocation of Ash, both very good cards uh, to play on the Border Rider, especially Invocation of Ash because it buffs both military and uh, political. Yeah. He's probably a little bit worried about uh, losing more to uh, assassinate, but... Yep. So with that bonsai, we see him up to six. And there's a maze of illusion. Play the guessing game. I always, I always bid, uh, sorry, I always guess odd with maze of illusion now. Do you? Yeah. Because every time I, I change my guess, I always get it wrong. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> or maybe I'm psyoping you just now. Damn it. Telling you. You don't, play, you don't play Scorpion anymore in your Phoenix deck. No, I don't. I know you don't. You never know. I can go back to that. So it uh, looks like it was an odd guess and an even reveal. That's all right. Will can just ready this guy. I mean, it's it kind of sucks because you don't get to do a second attack with him, but... I think the the object here is to try to break the province. I would ready the border rider, and I would uh, 
I would ready the Border Rider and then play Invocation. I would just be worried about uh, Fate Worse Than Death. Sung Ho was reading the Battle Maiden Recruit, and uh, I think he was just checking to see which rings turn it on. I believe, do believe it's the Water and the Void Ring. It is Water and Void Ring. The thing I always forget with the Battle Maiden, it's only military strength. It's not political as well, unlike well, most of the other ones. No, all, uh, each, each other one buffs only one stat. The rings change. It's which rings change. Uh, it? Yeah. Like the Akoma Reservist, for example, yeah. in Lion, that only buffs military too. But it's... Uh, actually, the, the one that buffs both of them is the Monk Dynasty guy, but no one ever plays him. Okay. The, sorry, the Dragon Monk. Uh, I think he gets yeah. plus one, plus one. But no one ever plays him. Will's deciding how likely he is to be able to pull off a win here. I don't know. I feel like if Sungo had an assassination, he would have used it. No, it's not that. On a border it rider. It could be another for shame. It could, there's a good yeah. lot of things that could... Uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, another for shame would be really pretty bad here. So it looks like he was, he's thinking of playing the... Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, you either break or nothing happens, right? Yeah. I, well, the, winning the ring turns on your battle maiden. I guess so. But I think he was planning on using the battle but maiden recruit to sacrifice... Or maybe he was going to... Yeah. I, I don't know what his plan was here. Having invested fate on both these guys makes it unlikely that he's going to sacrifice yeah. them. So I think he just be like, yep. I don't really have a great outcome here, so I'm just going to withdraw. And then ready some Butter Rider. Well, in that case, I would have sacrificed the Battle Main recruit. Because now he... He, he doesn't get a second uh, conflict, military conflict, right? You uh, raise a good point. Actually, well, he has an invocation bash. Well, he's oh, probably no, going to he do. He didn't win the conflict, though. Sorry? He didn't win the conflict. He did win the conflict. No, he didn't. He, they were zero. went back. There was oh, no oh, ready okay. characters. Sorry. Right. You're right. That's fine. I'm dumb. No, I was like, well, that's a very good point, mm -hmm. Victor. Ooh, nice. This is upholding authority. Was a province that just got revealed? Yeah, Will was doing... He might as well. Like, it, it's not, yeah. not going to... Oh, no, with water... Yeah, well, he he, well, he's got Unleashed the Gen in his hand. Yeah. It's probably look, what he's looking to play here. At least he doesn't have to worry about... He, d he doesn't have to worry about... Um, but I would do an invocation. Forged uh, edict. Oh, invocation's not enough. No, invocation wouldn't do it. Because he has zero strength right now in his political conflict. Um, yeah, I think I actually think Unleashed Jin's the right play here. I, uh, I don't know if I want to... Oh, he's going to... I guess he's, he's going to do that, but he doesn't want to lose both talismans. I, I don't think preserving a talisman for one turn is makes a lot of sense. Well, you just play one talisman. No, I know, but you're only going to keep that. Only you only have it for one more turn. Okay, but then this also makes it less likely that Sungho takes the other talisman. I suppose that's true. Yeah, like if he had both talismans in his hand, that would be almost an obvious yeah. choice. But yeah. uh, nope. no, no, nope. you cannot do that. <laughs> Maybe that was Will, Will's plan all along. Yes. Yeah, you can only sacrifice if you win a military conflict. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Talisman was so that you win the conflict. Don't bother breaking. So you don't have to pay the... I you see. don't have to deal with the upholding. Well, at least that gives Will the favor. Yeah. Sucks that he wasn't able to break anything, though. I think Sung Ho's okay with that turn. Yeah, I mean, usually with Scorpion, all you, I mean, it's actually very good for you if they don't break anything, right? Now he has a he has a blackmail artist with a spyglass on it. Will Will actually spend a bunch of resources this turn? Didn't end up breaking anything, and you know, there's the Bayushi Kachiko. Um, 
in in Sungo's hand. He's got a he's got a city of lies on his pilgrimage. Uh, the I only th thing better than a city of lies on your pilgrimage is your hidden moon dojo on a yeah. pilgrimage. I'm not sure I hold on to Shinjo Shono at this point. I think I maybe. I I find with uh, Unicorn, you just want to aggressively bin everything. Yeah. Like he doesn't have enough resources yeah. to make an investment. Unless he had a charge in his hand, which I don't think he does, right? Uh, he didn't yet. No. Th things might turn around this this round, though. Yeah, Luster's play plagiarist. Because the top card of uh, Will Steck is a bonsai. Yes. I'm guessing Sungo's going to pass here. Yeah, I, I, I he already has. Yeah. There oh, he there he goes. Yeah, yeah, this is not the kind of board you play Kadok on just yet. No, no. You, you want to get a crushing fate advantage and then just start playing a, a big guy with lots of fate, one big guy with lots of fate every turn. So the bid was five versus five again. Uh, I do believe the illustrious plagiarist is a courtier in addition to a Shigenja. Yes. Yeah. So that's going to turn on that Forged Edict in his hand. I feel like the first thing you want to do is use the illustrious plagiarist's ability. Because the one thing about Unicorn is that, I mean, illustrious plagiarist doesn't want to copy, I don't think it wants to copy captive audience. It may want to copy Unleash Jin, but it, it, probably, it probably doesn't, doesn't work not. out for the Scorpion player. Uh, actually, it's a way to dip yourself low on honor so that you can steal, resume stealing from your opponent. But, I mean, the Banzai is such a good defensive card to play yeah. against a military deck that that's probably the first thing that I would do. Um, before Will has a chance to play any conflict cards to his uh, discard pile. So, does that mean like if you use the plagiarist to copy it, do you copy the map the limit? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. Sorry, you bring up the illustrious plagiarist on the thing. It gives it. It gives that. It copies the action. I would imagine it would copy the entire text, right? Sure, but yeah, I'm, the, I'm not the sure. Act, does is the action ability the thing that is max one, or is it the card that's max one? I feel, I feel like it would copy all the restrictions of that action ability. Yeah. I don't know, unless unless the 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 restriction is part of like the card text and not part of the action abilities text. I mean, it's at the end of the action ability, so it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's a descriptor, not a descriptor, um, a modifier, I think, instead of a. We'll just Google it. Oh. Unless unless someone in the chat knows, they can uh, they can let us know. If the uh, illustrious plagiarist copies the restriction of an action ability, or if it just copies the action text, I guess I guess the reason you're asking that is uh, you're wondering if you can bonsai twice in a turn, like once through a plagiarist and once through the play of the card itself. Yeah. Anyway, what Travis figures that out, we've got a uh, avoid military conflict onto what looks like uh, secret cash. Or hidden cash, rather. Is this secret or hidden cash? I can't, I can't remember. Uh, hidden cash? Hidden oh, cash. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got you confused. Yeah, uh, actually, I think it is secret cash. It's hidden secret. It's a secret secret cash. It is secret cash. Uh, so, yeah, just before we get too much further, um, maximums are per ability, per card title, per player. So you can play a bonsai and a plagiarist. You can't uh -huh. do two bonsais. You couldn't do two plagiarists with bonsai abilities. Because maximums are per, per ability per card title. Yeah. But 
it, but it's copying the text of a card. Does it? I guess does the game remember the title of that card? Like no, no, no. It doesn't remember the card. So it's, it, the action is on the plagiarist. So that's the card title and the that, that, card. So yeah, yeah. So you could, if you had two plagiarists, you couldn't play bonsai plagiarist bonsai plagiarist, yes. but you could play plagiarist bonsai. Yes. Okay. Today I learned. Yes, that is the exact text I was just looking at. Thank you, uh, yeah. as Taryn. No, I mean it's always helpful when uh, chat yes. chat got. Yeah, we had that. We had that up actually. That's uh, that's how we found out the uh, thing. But thank you, as a well, That's the problem with the the, the uh, delay on the stream. Uh, they they. It's only like a ten second delay though. Uh, there, there are, I think it's like a minute or two right now. Yep. Depends on the day. I always actually for the longest time. This is embarrassing to admit. I. I thought that you, um, do you know the, the text on Kitsuki Investigator? Yeah. Yeah. When it said max one per conflict, I thought it meant that uh, you could do it in multiple conflicts. Like, in, you know how usually it says limit once per round or yeah. uh, max once per round? Yeah. I thought max once per conflict meant that you could use the same Kitsuki Investigator uh, that, that ability on that Kitsuki Investigator, you could use it multiple times in a turn, provided they were in different conflicts. That, that is true. No, it's not. Because it's you, not conflict phase. You can only ever do it once in a turn. The max modifier is only describing, it's describing that you can only use, like you said, card title. You can only use it once per conflict. So if I had two Kitsuki Investigators... Oh yeah, you can't do it two in the same conflict. Yeah. You can use the same one in different conflicts. No, no, but you still have the restriction of once per turn. It's still it's still restricted by uh, the ability oh, really? of a... Yes. Yeah. I, I can't remember who pointed it out to me, but I was confused by that wording, too. It, you're still limited to the... Like, you can only ever use an action ability once per turn unless specifically stated otherwise. That max is an additional restriction saying even if you had two copies... Of okay. a, uh, just like if you had two copies of right, Bonsai, right. you could only ever play one. I copy. thought it, yeah, I thought it modified the. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it's Katsuki's Investor is still my favorite dragon card, but uh, apparently I had been cheating for the longest time before someone pointed that out to me. So cloud the mine. Yeah, as as. Uh, as Tarun, yeah, he's backing me up. You can't use two investigators in the same conflict. That's correct, and you're you're still limited to um, only uh, using each investigator once per turn. Okay, yes. Yeah. So if it's actually modifying, it'll say limit instead of max. Well, limit. So <laughs> yes, yeah. Like um, like Kadaka says. Do limit you know that? Twice do you know that hand. card? The new card, Tactician's Apprentice. Sure. That reaction. Yeah. I believe you can do that in uh, multiple, like that one says limit once per uh, phase. Right. So you could do it, if, if I'm wrong, uh, as to run or anyone else in the chat, uh, correct me, right. but for Tactician's Apprentice, it oh, says sorry. whenever yeah. the dials are lower, you can, yeah. Right. And so you can do it during the draw phase and then like say if you're in a duel or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the same thing, like Kudaka is limit twice per round. Yeah. Yeah. So limit modifies the limit max Sets a cap yes. per period. It's why you can't endlessly regress uh, Way of the Dragon and uh, Tagashi Yukuni as well. I think that was the original precedent that, uh, that made that whole discussion. Uh, so, yeah, we've lost track of where we think No, no, I mean, game. it's the same conflict. I mean, it's a good thing we digress. No, I know, but I don't have the strength. So. It looks like Way of the Jin got played, I think. Well, I see uh, four strength here and then four strength there. So I'm going to assume it's. If Way of the Jin got played, then if these three characters here are participating. I'm going to go double check here. Yeah. Actually, sorry. So it's Way of the Jin on Moto Youth, plus it looks like the Nizumi Infiltrator may have gotten played afterward. But Travis is going to go to the table and check to see what the strengths are. Unfortunately, uh, today we don't have the table audio. We usually have the table audio so we can keep track of what's going on on the table itself. Uh, but 
Uh, we have a we have a slightly new setup today, so some of the things aren't working as normal. Those of you who've been sticking around during the breaks uh, have noticed that we don't have any break music right now, and we're gonna hopefully come back with that next time. I think the next conflict is in two weeks or so. So it was four, right? Four to four. Yeah. He played the Nizumi Infiltrator after he ginned. Well, he put the, he played the Yogo. Uh, okay. He countered the with K K K K K K Kokoji. Oh, because it is a spell, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, but so he just countered the other one. He just played Forged Edict on uh, on uh, Unleashed Jin with the Illustrious Plagiarist. So that makes it six three. Yeah. The thing is that doesn't. Uh, it's not a break, but. So that was a lot of investment just to win and not break. He did get the he got the stronghold off though. I know, but he only has so many characters left. It looks like he already used the border rider too. Yeah, I guess he, it got, he got four shamed. I yeah. think. Military air. Oh no, sorry. Will Will's at three honor by the yeah, way. Sorry. Yeah. Did he, he forge edict the second? Uh, yes. Jin. Yep. Why bother? I guess if you play, all you need to play one more character then to. So pilgrimage change. was the province that was revealed on Will's side. Uh, it looks like it's Yogo. Uh, I don't think he's defending. There's no reason to. The Shinjo Outrider can just move in by itself, and he also has a favorable ground if he really needs to. Plus, there's the uh, Talisman of the Sun that's on uh, that's on Will's side. So it's just going to be an unopposed conflict. I mean, that's dangerous, too, because Will's sitting at oh, yeah. three, three honor. Yeah. It looks like Sungo's at nine. Yeah. Spanish? Uh, no, no. I know. I know. Like half well, those I, words. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jugadas play play a unicorn. Siempre, siempre is. Uh, I was for a second. I was trying to decide okay. if it was Spanish or Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, You can just run it through Google Translate. <laughs> Copy paste, man. It's all right. It's fine. So Mona Katero said, those who play Unicorn always lose. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Moto Katero, if you played, if you were watching last round, Will actually won his uh, his game versus Jonathan, and Jonathan was playing Crane. So, um, I think, I mean, I think this is also a case of a pretty bad matchup for Unicorn, where where Scorpion just happens to have a bunch of counter spells and all that, right? So. But I'm guessing by Moto Katero's name, he's also a unicorn player. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. N normally, Will doesn't play unicorn. He's uh, in in almost every other tournament that he's played, and he plays uh, Phoenix decks. In fact, Oof. he won the last stronghold. He's assassinating event. the border rider. Yep. Yeah, he won the last stronghold event. Will won the last stronghold Down to his event last playing honor. a Phoenix deck. Right. Fainting attacks, yep. Yeah. 
yeah, you got to be in a position where you can get them to either overcommit or be unable to handle your attack. So that's actually what I really enjoyed about the uh, Phoenix aggro deck yeah. with uh, strength and strength of the ancestors. You put you in a real position with just a single character to they either have to commit to nothing, right. or you could actually end up turning that one character into a really powerful attack. You know the weird thing is, I feel like now with um, Ethereal Dreamer, you don't even need to do the feigning attack anymore. Because like, you just have so many Shigenja that are just powerful by themselves. Sure, but that's still not necessarily a break, right? Yeah. So we see Kachiko get played in here. Will finally manage to break, but... This is political earth conflict with Kachiko. So this is like, yeah, got I mean, one on or left. You can bring someone in, but they're just going away. Oh, with uh, Kachiko's ability, right? Yes. Well, I mean, he has... So he can bring in a character, and then he can Shinjo Outrider a character... Uh, Shinjo oh, Outrider sure. back in. Actually, no, he can't. He can't. It looks like he's used it already. Even yeah. if he did Shinjo, that's going to make the Outrider dishonored. Oh, no, I guess he could go second with... Uh, no, Kachiko doesn't dishonor the uh, character. It just bows and sends it home. Oh, sorry. Never yeah. Uh, Moto Katero says, I'll never play a like, card like Jin against Scorp with Edict for uh, Forged Edict available. Yeah. Th there, was a, there was a point in the game where uh, the only courtier that Sungo had was Dishonored. So um, he, may have, like, he may have had a window to play it then, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, All right. yeah Sungho, Sungho wins. But it, it's, it's true, right? There, you got you to gotta find those windows where... Um, where you can exploit uh, your opponent not having any non-dishonored courtiers to try to push through a, an event or something like that. 